Okay, guys and gals, are you ready for another Battle Room Bible Study video? So this video, uh, completely uh, unplanned, uh, this is actually a, a video that's going out to a, a guy out uh, in social media, and he's a great guy. Uh, I, I've got to know him uh, just a little bit, and he's a Christian. He's, he, he's a, a man after God's own heart. Uh, for this video, I want to talk about where we go to get proper counsel, where we get wisdom. So this video goes out to a, a guy, I want to call him Bill. The reason I want to use the name of Bill is you guys know I go by the name of Bill, and I find that if uh, I kind of use my name and, and no one feels like uh, you know, they're being, uh, having the finger pointed at them. But I want to tell everybody something. Uh, this actual topic, um, we all struggle with this, okay? So what do you say we open in prayer and we're going to talk about godly counsel and God's Word. Here we go. Lord Father in Heaven, Lord Father, we thank You for Your Son, Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, that uh, the words in this video would be inspired by you, and that I would be only the one that delivers your word. I pray, Father, that uh, your words would fall on the ears of many, and I pray, Lord, that, that Bill would ultimately receive this, and he would be humbled, and, and, and he would uh, turn to you, Lord, for his ultimate counsel. In your Son Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, um, you know, it, it's kind of a, a different world today than it was, you know, before we had the, the Internet. When we talk about, you know, good godly counsel, um, you know, some people's idea of good counsel would be just a, a good gossip session over some coffee you now I think you guys know what I'm saying right but for the Christian the man after God's own heart there is a question that I wonder how many people ponder this this question but do you think that social media such as Facebook do you think it's fooled some of us to um, begin seeking godly counsel in places where we shouldn't be, places where we can be misguided? Do you think that that can happen? Oh, 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 I'm certain it can happen. I'm very certain it can happen. So I haven't really uh, been on Facebook uh, very long now, H half a year I guess, and you know, right out of the chute. Man, looking at Facebook, I just knew, really, that wasn't a, a place to be desired in the way of, uh, you know, there's really some great people on Facebook. There's some very good, strong Christians on Facebook. And, and God can work through any, any, anything to get to who He wants. But one thing that Facebook is not ideal for is seeking godly counsel and seeking wisdom from others. So I want I have a, a, a few uh, verses. Uh, I just jotted these down. They just kind of came to mind, and I want to I want to read these. The first is uh, Proverbs chapter twelve, verse five, and it says, The plans of the righteous are just, but the advice of the wicked is deceitful. Who, who's who's the, the righteous here? Who, who's the righteous? The righteous are those who have been made righteous in God through Christ, the Christians. So who, who are the wicked? Who are the wicked? Wicked would be anybody who has chosen their own way. 
made up their own religion, believe in a false god, someone that uh, you'll hear people say there is no god, but yet they treat themselves as a god. And, and uh, what is man? We're sinful. It's, it's wicked. Anybody that isn't a born-again Christian falls into this category of wicked. And we as uh, followers of Christ, we have to be aware of this, very much aware. Uh, Proverbs uh, 11, uh, 14. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors. Can you think of a country in the world right now where there's, you know, one running the country and they're not doing too good? You see what I'm saying? Just take what you want, leave what you don't. But who are the advisors? The advisors. An advisor, that's a person pretty high up. That's a person with a lot of great knowledge on the topic of. So who would a, an advisor for God be? And where would this advisor get his knowledge? Oh, we got to talk about that. Proverbs 24, 6. Surely you need guidance to wage war, and victory is won through many advisors. Who are these advisors? Where do they get their knowledge? Okay. Let me share with you something that I do in my walk in life that keeps me in line with God. Okay? Right here on my contact list, I have uh, contacts, men, men that I can rely on who are good godly men. These would be men that if, you know, I had to make a good godly decision and I wanted counsel. These would be good godly men that won any day, any day I could ask them, have your eyes fallen where they shouldn't have fallen? Have you been anywhere where you shouldn't have been? I could ask any of these guys a list of questions and after they told me no, I could say okay and have you just lied to me? These are men of great godly counsel. They are advisors. What makes them advisors? Where does an advisor go to get his knowledge? I want to read something to you. Uh, this uh, is in Matthew uh, chapter 4 and this is uh, you know, it really isn't direct to the subject, but it does drive my my point home uh, pretty pretty good, actually. Um, this is when Jesus was being tempted by Satan, and I'm not going to read every bit of it, but I want you to think about this. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Who is Satan talking to? Jesus Christ, like the advisor of all advisors. Well, where did Jesus get his information? Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And every word that comes from the mouth of God, that's your holy Bible. That is where 
advisors of Christ get their information. These are the people we want to go to as our counsel. Why am I saying this? We can all agree that there are so many good Christians out there on Facebook. I'm not going to, I am not going to uh, deny that one bit. But I will tell you this. There's a lot of Christians that go to church every Sunday and they never open their Bible from Sunday to Sunday. You know, when we go out on the Facebook and we need help with a certain issue, a Christian who never opens their Bible will give you the same advice as a person who makes up their own religion. Who's a person that makes up their own religion? A person that could tell you, well, I believe God is like this. Or I believe God is like this. And the next thing you know, they've created a whole other religion. They've now got a God that, that they are telling you what their God is like. You want to know what that this uh, Christian who never opens their Bible has in common with the person who creates their own God? Do you not want to know what they have in common when you ask them a question? What they have in common is, is they will always, they will always give you advice based off of feelings and emotion. I got a challenge for you. Go into God's Word and find anywhere where God made a decision based off emotion. Go in the Bible and show me anywhere where God gave someone instructions based off emotion. You don't find it. You, you don't believe me? Our Bible tells us that on Judgment Day, judgment will be without mercy. So tell me where the emotion is there. So when we go out onto Facebook or social media, and we begin asking questions, now guys, I see it. I see worldly wisdom in the comments. But what I don't see is anything back with God's Word, God's Scripture. This is why going to social media for your godly counsel is dangerous. You don't believe me? You don't believe me? You know, I don't know a lot about Revelations. I really don't. People will ask me, and I don't know a lot about Revelations. The reason I don't know a lot about Revelations is, you know what I do? I preach Jesus. I preach Jesus. Why wouldn't, why would I want to worry about the end times when I just want to share with someone else what Christ did for me? Now, don't get it mixed up, folks. I don't want to go tell someone how great I am. I want to go to someone else and tell them what Jesus Christ did for me, He can do for you. Time is at hand. Time is at hand. I don't have time to worry about revelations. When it's done, it's done. Christ is coming back. I want to tell people about Christ. But there is something I can tell you about revelations. You can put this through the test. Anybody can put this through the test. All of the problems that Christ has with the church, the churches in Revelations, came from the church in the most slightest way deviating from God's Word, from God's command. He doesn't forget this. So why would we, as godly men and women, go to Facebook? It, it would be like a man who wants to be a master of martial arts. And he only goes to the worst dojo he could ever choose, the one where you know, you know, the real dojo makes you do knuckle push-ups, don't they? But the dojo he picked, they just do regular push-ups. And 
you know, they just really, they don't really do kata form. They, and, you know, they don't really work with real knives in hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's watered down. It's not the real thing. You go into Revelations and you look. You look at what Jesus is talking to. He's talking to the church, but who's the church? The church is you. The church is me. And somewhere we have to say, no, I want good, godly counsel. And the advisors that I communicate with are men. Or if you're a woman, they're a woman that get their word from God and good, godly men. Now, as far as counseling one-on-one, -on -one, no man should ever counsel a woman. No woman should ever counsel a man. That's wrong. That is wrong. Okay, and I'm not talking a pastor of a church speaking with a woman. A pastor of a church is a completely different topic. We could write books and books on that. But what I'm talking about, what I'm talking about is those of us who attend church should not be counseling members of the opposite sex. It just should not happen. It's wrong. It's evil. It's evil. And you don't believe me? What is Jesus Christ's problem with the church? Sexual immorality. Don't go there. Men counsel women. Or, don't, don't go there. Men counsel men. Women counsel women. You understand me? What I'm talking about is a very serious issue. God's Word is sovereign. Do you understand what sovereign means? It doesn't change. God's Word is the same today as it was when He created Adam. It's no different. God's Word is God. God is sovereign. He doesn't change. So for us to get good godly counsel, we do not go unto that of the world. We do not. The men that I have in my contact list, they would never ever go to Facebook and talk about family issues. They would never ever go to Facebook talking about other people. As a matter of fact, let me tell you something about the godly men that that are my accountability partners. We really don't get into specific personal talk. We don't give any more information than we need to take it before God and let God fix it. I don't want to know the details of what someone's struggling with. If you're struggling with some something, don't tell somebody. If you have a true accountability partner, yes, you can go and you can tell them what you're struggling with, but that person isn't going to want to know every single detail about your life. They're just going to understand that you're a sinner, you're struggling with something, or there's something that you're dealing with, you want to know how to deal with it. But a true, a true friend isn't going to want to know every single little thing about what just happened to you, because that, my friend, leaves you open for gossip. But the good godly men that I know, I could call them and say, you know, this is my situation, and I just, I just want to know how to handle it, you know. And we'll go to God's Word. We'll go to God's Word together. We'll let God, uh, you know, the book of James, it, God tells us. James tells us that when you ask God for wisdom, He will give it to you without reproach. That means He will not be mad at you. He'll be so joyful in you, and He will give it to you, and He has to. Otherwise, that would be a lie, and God's not a liar. But how do we get His wisdom? 
from his word. And the more you read into God's word, the more you read into God's word, you realize that every day, really, you want to know what our job is? Our job every day is to enjoy life, the opposite of worry. I could, I could do, I could do 10 chapters on it. That will be my next video. That is such an important topic of joy in your life. What does God want? People think God's this, this stern man, and they, they think that, uh, they think that, you know, he, he, he is mad at them, and he hates them, and he, he, he wants you to live this, um, this life that's so strict but what God wants is joy in our lives that will be the next topic uh, look for that Bible study shortly it is such an important is how I live my life every day I don't get up with regrets and fears and worries I get up with joy joy in my heart why wouldn't I want to be joyful for God but if you're gonna be joyful in God you have to know God's Word you have to know every bit of God's Word you have to know that now what do I have on my phone? This is my smartphone. I use this because it's easier than uh, having a book out here. It makes it easier for me to make the video, but let me show the viewers what I have. This is my my U version right here. This was my U version. Get it on your phone. Get it on your phone. Why, why do you want it on your phone? There's, there's too much temptation in this world. Uh, uh, it, it's too easy for our eyes to fall when what, what, what we shouldn't be looking at and it's too easy to let stuff pop up on our screen there's a lot of guys they are caught up in pornography it's wrong it's wrong and what does Jesus what's Jesus have a problem with with the church immorality immorality and who's the church us when you have God's Word on your phone, it's really hard to look at God's Word. It's really hard to look at pornography and then look back at God and say, Hey, the Holy Spirit is in you and He wants to work on you. And you need everything you can get. You need God's Word on your smartphone. The other reason you need God's Word is wherever you're at, you have your smartphone and you need good Godly advice, God's wisdom, you got it. You just start reading, you start praying. That's what you need to do. You need to go to God's Word to get your wisdom. You need to go to good godly counsel. What What is it that makes uh, Christians all over the world exactly the same? They are the Christians that live by God's Word. They are the Christians they live every breath by God's Word. And who was it? Jesus Christ that said what He said. Let me get it right. Let me get it right, guys. I don't want to uh, mess God's Word up. And Jesus told Satan, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that come from the mouth of God. Jesus Christ, God incarnate, relied on every word of God to what everything in life just not to be tempted by Satan but for everything in life and that's how we have to be so to my good friend Bill you're such a good guy and I want everybody to know that uh, Bill has a huge heart for God and he's on fire for God and uh, you know it's so easy for us to have what we have inside and just go to people and begin looking for this support but that's not the support that God desires for us uh, God wants us to take our struggles to him lay them before him and he ultimately is the one that his yoke is lighter than ours and he wants us to take his yoke and he wants to take our yoke that's what he wants to do so there we go so guys and gals, that's the end of this video. God bless. We'll see you on the next.